This is the eLearning Alchemist podcast. Welcome to this edition of the Sunday Rant on the eLearning Alchemist podcast. Today, I'm going to share an opinion. And if you've listened to any of the other podcasts, particularly the Sunday Rant, that won't surprise you. So why do I bring it up this time? Well, this one could be easily argued for a number of reasons. So I'd like to make my case for the biggest mistake L&D has ever made. On a recent LinkedIn post, Adam Morgan, a voice actor from Australia, recalled attending an e-learning conference years back that had a tagline, something to the effect of faster, better, cheaper. And while we can certainly pick apart each of those words, let's focus on the last one, cheaper. It's my contention that the biggest mistake learning and development has ever made was pitching e-learning as a cheaper alternative to instructor-led training. To be fair, it's completely understandable why we did this. There was, and in many cases still is, resistance to e-learning. There was a new cost associated with it, and there were and are no shortage of skeptics regarding its efficacy. So we instinctively picked the low-hanging and easily quantifiable fruit. E-learning ushered in an era of reduced travel costs and meal costs. It also meant that we could reclaim the training room for storage we'd no longer need to print large manuals and handouts, and perhaps most importantly, we'd reduce salary costs by keeping people on the job, while regaining the opportunity costs we were losing by having them away from it. And although we probably didn't mention it, there was more than one business leader licking their lips at the idea of reducing their training headcount by one or two. Yep, we sold e-learning to organizations as a cost-saving measure. What a stupid idea. Well, it helped us get e-learning in the door, it hasn't led to greater acceptance of the work that we do, it hasn't given us any more credibility. Instead, it's led to the belief that e-learning is a viable option to fix performance problems cheaply and easily. But as any e-learning developer will tell you, developing high-quality e-learning, that is the type of learning that transfers knowledge, builds skills, and influences behaviors, is anything but cheap and easy. Unfortunately, now that our stakeholders have a taste for cheap in their mouths, that's what they want. And the more cheap, low-quality e-learning we build, the more our customers believe it should be done cheaply, and the less anyone believes it can be done well. It's a downward spiral we've been perpetually challenged to escape, and the consequences have been very real. If you've ever tried and failed to get another storyline or captivate license, you know what I'm talking about. When you get pushback on a software license that costs almost nothing by most business standards, we've done something terribly wrong. When we pitched e-learning as the cheaper alternative, we essentially told our customers, the businesses we serve, that what we do isn't valuable enough to justify the cost, so we should reduce the cost by any means necessary, regardless of how it impacts quality, because the quality is already so low that it can't get much worse. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that this message isn't the type that builds your credibility as a department. In hindsight, it's easy to judge. Those who were leading learning teams when e-learning began to proliferate probably couldn't foresee the consequences of this messaging. They could, of course, see the potential of the technology and were probably frustrated that they couldn't get buy-in more easily. Even today, we struggle to get budget increases, but that in itself is an important message. If we aren't able to get the budgets we seek, are we asking for too much or are we providing too little? It's a value equation that we need to figure out. There may be a bit of the former, but there's no doubt a lot of the latter. We don't get more budget because we don't produce more results. And that should have been, and still should be, the pitch for e-learning. We should have asked, and must still ask, how can e-learning be used to improve business performance? Instead of trying to produce more, more quickly, which inevitably leads to poorer quality and invisible, read, non-existent results, we need to slow down. Look at how we use e-learning and ask ourselves how it can be used more effectively. We can't get out of this trap unless we do something differently. Our employees hate e-learning and our business leaders don't believe it's worth very much. But who can blame them? Our current method of next, 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 multiple choice question is pathetic. Yeah, I said it. And I build e-learning for a living. 
We made a mistake by pitching e-learning as a cost-conscious approach to training, and we're still paying for that mistake decades later. That's the end of the rant. Jump into the description, click the link, and leave your thoughts on this podcast. Podcast.